ever since the small tease in Evil Dead 2, fans have clamored to see three of the biggest horror franchises have an epic monster mashup. Once upon a time, we almost had a movie that featured Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and The Evil Dead. Sadly, that would never come to be. Though we would see these three characters from these three franchises end up meeting up in some way, we're going to figure out on this episode whatever happened to the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash movie. What the hell happened here? Many fans credit Freddy vs. Jason as the reason we almost got a triple threat crossover with Ash from Evil Dead, but the origins of this mashup go way earlier than that. These three films have had an odd connection to each other dating back all the way to the 80s, with the most recent stuff only cementing what many fans knew in their hearts. Somehow, Friday 13th, Elm Street, and Evil Dead all exist in the same universe, and our first hint at this dates back to 1987 with Evil Dead 2. The far campier sequel to the original Sam Raimi film added a whole new element to the franchise, making it more over the top and even a bit meta. In this film, we get a brief glimpse at Freddy Krueger's iconic glove in the shed. Yes, seeing that iconic glove from Freddy was just the start of this. We all thought that was a self-aware reference, but it would send these franchises down a stranger path. While seeing the glove in Evil Dead 2 was only a fleeting glance, that would set into motion what would eventually be the collaboration between these universes. This would go on to get more obvious in Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. No, it's not the final film in the franchise, and no, it's not really that great. <laughs> But there's so much in this one film that helps expand Freddy vs. Jason and even connects Jason to the Necronomicon in the Evil Dead movies. For many fans, we all know that Jason Goes to Hell is that movie that has the epic moment where Freddy's glove comes from the underworld and pulls Jason's hockey mask down with him. <laughs> But did you know this was also the movie that confirmed that Jason Voorhees is a deadite from the Evil Dead movies? In November 2017, Jason Goes to Hell director Adam Marcus revealed that an overlooked plot point from the movie is that Jason Voorhees is actually connected to the Evil Dead franchise. The filmmaker stated in an interview that he felt Pamela Voorhees made a deal with the devil by reading from the Necronomicon to bring back her son which would explain his zombie-like persona in later films and why he never drowned in the lake to begin with. Director Adam Marcus would go on to say that the Evil Dead creator Sam Raimi loved this idea, but they couldn't get New Line Cinema to include the Evil Dead into the film because they didn't own the rights. He would go on to talk about including the Necronomicon in his film and stating directly that Jason Voorhees is a deadite. He is one of the Evil Dead. After Jason Goes to Hell, all the franchises go on a bit of a hiatus. We have Jason X, and then we go to Freddy vs. Jason, which was an event film. This was like the Avengers Endgame for horror fans in the early 2000s, but we were laying the groundwork for a collaboration. We were having the references to Evil Dead. Could this be the start of our epic Ash versus Jason versus Freddy? It could be, but it sadly would not work out that well. Development for Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash was rocky from the start. New Line Cinema had the rights to Friday and Nightmare, but not Evil Dead. Still, Larry Katz, a producer behind Freddy vs. Jason, wanted to bring these films together. Jason goes to help plant the seeds, and now Katz wanted to water those seeds. Katz would go on to put a treatment together, but sadly never made it past that phase. It seems like the creative heads behind all these franchises all walked in with massive ideas how to handle this crossover event, but could not agree on a conclusion. The actor who plays Ash Williams, Bruce Campbell, even opened up about this creative process and talked about what the meetings were like and said this was not easy when it came with all these creative minds coming together. Campbell would go on to say, we had a five minute conversation with New Line Cinema about Ash versus Freddy versus Jason. They approached us and they go, okay, what do you think about that? And we're like, great, Ash can kill them both. There was a long pause. Well, actually, that's not something we can entertain. And we could not control any other character, only control Ash. What these guys said or what they did that they can't kill each other. 
so right away it was creatively bankrupt. With the movie dead on arrival because of studio executives and their egos and how to handle these franchises, what would happen to the story? What would Larry Katz do with his treatment that he would write for the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash film? Well, he would turn it into a comic book. Yes, inspired by the crazy DC events like the Crisis on Infinite Earth event, he decided to make this a epic comic book collaboration for the millennia. Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash and its 2009 sequel, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, The Nightmare Warriors, are described as an epic fanboy story. Katz and co-writer James Corrick attempted to bring together decades of story that spanned across three franchises and turn it into a cohesive event on par with something we would see like now, an Avengers movie. The comics would go on to be a campy romp and end up having a cult following. This felt like a love letter to fans of these iconic franchises and it's kind of the best that we could do. I was personally a big fan of these comic books. I really enjoy them. There are some epic collaborations. They bring together so many stories from all of this. People that were there in the Freddy movies, people that were there in the Jason movies, and Ash Williams there with his chainsaw hand. As much as I would have loved to see a film, I think they were allowed to have a little bit more fun in the world of comics. There was no budget, no studio executives, just pure horror mayhem. Though the studio executives killed this film and we never got to see Bruce Campbell, Robert England, and Kane Hodder have an epic battle, we now know whatever happened to the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash film. What do you guys think of this video? What do you guys think of this story? Were you fans of Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash? Were you looking forward to this movie? Were you disappointed to see how it all came together? But did you end up getting to read the comic books? Let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week and give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. All right guys, let's talk about whatever happened to Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash down below.